in this simulation we will look at the processes the various thermodynamic processes so as you know that the ideal gas law it describes in the, in the ideal gas law you have the variables pv equal to nrt right okay so pv and t the pressure volume and temperature are the microscopic variables which describe the uh, state of the gas and <coughs> n is the number of moles of gas present in the container and r is the universal gas constant which just tells you how much energy per mole per kelvin is present in the gas okay so now we can re for convenience we can rewrite it as pv by t is equal to nr which is a constant so no matter how the state of the gas changes its pressure may change volume may change its temperature may change but this ratio of pv by t will always remain a constant so for solving various problems we can use this in the form p initial v initial by t initial is equal to p final v final by t final okay so now in any problem you may be given the initial pressure initial volume final pressure final volume and final temperature so you may have to find out the initial temperature like that so out of these six variables any one may be unknown which you may have to find or solve for okay now in the various process you keep any one of these three state variables constant and see how the other two vary with respect to each other so if you keep the pressure constant that is called isobaric process so if the pressure is kept constant then volume by time uh, volume by temperature is going to be constant so you will get v by t is equal to nr by p and that is going to be a constant because now pressure is kept constant so you get a straight line graph if you plot it if you plot uh, <coughs> volume versus temperature so the slope will be given by nr by p so v by t will give you a constant positive slope nr by p similarly if you keep volume as constant then what will give you a straight line graph a plot of pressure versus time so you will get pressure by time uh, i mean sorry temperature this t represents temperature remember so often it can confuse us so make a note so t is the temperature also. so pressure versus temperature will now be equal to nr by v which is constant and will it will give you the slope of the graph if you plot p versus t and if you keep temperature as constant Ah, so when vo uh, volume is kept constant it is called isochoric process so let me no uh, note it down so this is so pressure is kept constant that is called isobaric process volume is kept constant and that will be called isochoric process and when temperature is kept constant that is called isothermal process so when temperature is kept constant you get pv is equal to nrt is equal to constant so you get p is equal to nrt by v 
so it is proportional to 1 by V so you get that volume is inversely proportional to pressure when temperature is kept constant so now the graph will be will not be a straight line it will be the gra graph of an inverse uh, inverse graph ok so now let us see how these graphs are in the real simulation so let us look at this simulation now we will start with the isobaric process so the <coughs> the graph you can see in advance how it is going to be so in isobaric process isobaric process pressure is kept constant so vt graph will give you a straight line so in this pt and pv graph you find pressure is constant it's not changing with even though temperature is changing okay but here as the te temperature increases the volume increases okay now this is the piston okay so this is the piston which will push the gas to compress it or it will come out I mean it will come down when the gas expands so whenever the gas expands and moves the piston down it does work and if you are going to keep the pressure constant and still you want the volume to increase that is possible only if you provide heat energy into the system so that the temperature of the gas will increase and so that it will expand so without increasing the temperature you cannot increase the volume if the pressure is kept constant so that is why you need to provide heat during an isobaric process this is the pressure gauge which will show the change in pressure this is the thermometer which will show the increase in temperature so when I click on start you have to observe the thermometer reading so now I will click on initial state ok so now the thermometer reading is at 300 Kelvin and the volume is 1 liter and the pressure is 100 kilo pascals so 1 liter is same as 1 decimeter cube so now let me click on the start button so you can see that the volume is increasing heat is being input work is being done right I'll do it again and the temperature is increasing 300 400 500 and it reaches till 600 and you can see how the position uh, position of the point in the VT graph increases along this straight line and you can see how the pressure remains constant and then the temperature and volume is increasing okay. so now let us check out the isochoric process so in an isochoric process the volume is going to be uh, kept constant so the piston is locked in place so the initial pressure is uh, 100 kilo pascal so if the volume is going to kept uh, kept constant and you need to increase the pressure and the number of moles of gas you are not going to change so then how can you increase the pressure the only way is again to heat the gas so when you heat the gas the gases will start moving with greater speed the gas molecules so they will hit the piston wall with greater speed so they will transfer greater momentum to the piston wall and so they will exert a greater pressure so let us see so now start so you can see the volume is remaining fixed the pressure gauge shows an increase in reading and the temperature also increases ok so you get pressure is directly proportional to temperature and when the volume is uh, kept constant the pressure increases like a vertical line vertically like this and in the, velo uh, and in the volume versus temperature graph as the temperature increases the volume remains constant during a isochoric process okay now let us check out the isothermal process <coughs> so in an isothermal process the temperature is going to remain constant okay and if the temperature is going to remain constant then uh, in this animation what will happen let us first see so here we are doing work on the gas to compress it ok and this 
compression is happening at the constant temperature so isothermal compression we call it as isothermal compression so if the <coughs> inter and the internal energy of the gas is constant which means now we are talking about ideal gas so in an ideal gas the internal energy of the gas is completely made up of just the kinetic energy of the gas the translational kinetic energy so it's a monoatomic ideal gas so it can have energy only in the form of translational kinetic energy there is no vibrational or rotational energies involved because of which the average kinetic energy of a gas molecule can be said to be 3 by 2 kt where k is the boltzmann constant so if you do work by compressing the gas then where will all this work go either it should heat up the gas or it should be stored in the gas i mean it, it should either heat up the gas or it will be released as heat energy now since we are saying that this is an isothermal compression whatever work you do it cannot heat up the gas if it had been used up to heat up the gas then the temperature of the gas would have increased so if it is not going to heat up the gas then whatever work you do has to be released as heat energy so that is what is happening here so i am clicking on start button so the initial pressure is 100 kilo pascal when i uh, compress it by doing work i end up increasing the pressure to 200 kilo pascal and the initial volume was 2 liters now the volume will decrease to 1 liter the temperature remains constant at 300 kelvin so you can see how the pressure is increasing and heat is released and i am doing the work do we play it once more so as i do work heat is released the pressure of the gas increases temperature of the gas remains constant 